today on Katie. She calls herself the Martha Stewart of marijuana. Meet the marijuana mom of Beverly Hills. Why she says vaporizing, eating, and cooking with pot saved her life. It gave me my life back with my children and my family. That surprising revelations from Dame Helen Mirren. I know that you have a real thing for Lucite Heels. Helen Mirren in a sex shop. I'm having a hard time picturing it. Plus, why didn't I think of that? Women who turn dreams into reality with incredible inventions. Can I just say, yum? From Studio One in New York, it's Katie. Really interesting show in store for all of you today. But before we get started, here's a little blast from the past. Take a look. These high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain. Innocently, they dance. Innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. Wow. Times have changed, right? Well, that was a trailer to the 1936 movie, Reefer Madness. And we've gone from fighting the evil weed from hell to a place where marijuana is being used legally in many states and is poised to become a booming and legitimate industry. That's our headline story. And we begin with a California mom who's blazing a trail for the new high society. She calls herself the Martha Stewart of marijuana. And she says... That's a good thing. Cannabis, Mary Jane, pot, weed. No matter what you call it, marijuana is becoming mainstream. From Showtime's hit series Weeds, about a suburban California mom who sells marijuana to support her family. Gentlemen, I sell marijuana. To real life moms making headlines. Hot mom, the suburban soccer mother accused of running a multi-million dollar marijuana operation. 48% of Americans say they've tried marijuana at some point in their lives. And the old stereotype of stoners is going up in smoke. Cheryl Schumann is proof that the face of those who partake and those who even sell the drug is changing. There are basically two kinds of cannabis, medical grade cannabis, sativas and indicas. She runs the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club, a multi-million dollar business, and hosts regular parties at her home where she and other moms cook, eat, smoke, and vaporize with marijuana. Dinner. I like a little marijuana leaf. And as weed grows in the suburbs and beyond, so has public approval. A recent poll found that more than half of Americans think marijuana should be legalized. With 18 states and Washington, D.C. already allowing pot for medicinal use, and Colorado and Washington clearing the way for adult recreational use, the drug that was once taboo may be coming to a store near you. So please welcome Cheryl Schumann and her daughter, Amy. Nice to see you both. Thank you. Thanks for being here. This is so interesting. You've really, Cheryl, made a cottage industry out of cannabis, but it comes from your own experiences with marijuana. Tell me about when you started using marijuana and why. Sure. Um, I was a corporate woman working in film and television, specializing in PR and product placement. And in 1996, um, I was going through a really bad divorce and a stressful time. And my psychiatrist had prescribed uh, Prozac and uh, Xanax and a number of pharmaceuticals. And then one day he looked at me and nothing else was working. And he looked at me and he said, Prop, 19, or, uh, Prop 215 just passed. It's legal. And lady, you need to smoke a joint. So <laughs> really, he rolled one up for me and showed me how to do it because I had never even smoked a cigarette. I didn't drink. I'd never done drugs. And within two puffs, I was smiling and laughing for the first time. And I would rather have those side effects any day. Uh, then fast forward to 2006, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And I used cannabis as a last resort, and it saved my life. And in fact, I don't smoke uh, cannabis. I vaporize cannabis. It's a healthier alternative. So you're a true believer. I mean, we don't want to give people 
false hope that marijuana can cure their cancer, but you feel it had an instrumental role in your recovery. Agreed. I, I would never be a person to go out there and claim this is a miracle cure, stop everything you're doing. I, I don't believe that. I believe that it was a combination of different therapies and it worked for me. Tell me how you turned from using marijuana to turning it into a multi-million dollar business. How did that come about? Well, I juice the plant. I have cannabis juice every morning, which is actually a non-psychoactive way to use cannabis. It's specifically for tumor growth. And when I decided to use cannabis, I needed a lot of it. So we decided to do our own garden. So my daughter and I, we planned our garden. We planted our garden together right there with my tomatoes and zucchinis and everything else. And so we formed a legal collective because we wanted to do everything legal. And then with the extra that we had, uh, when people found out that I was back in town from the entertainment industry, I started getting calls from all of my friends who are producers, actors, and so forth. And they said, oh my God, we heard you have cancer, but we also heard you have a marijuana garden. We want to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. More importantly, I guess, right? <laughs> and um, so then it was strange. The day I got back, I got a call from a friend of mine who was the executive producer of Wilfred, and he said, I need your plants for a, a TV series that we're doing. And that's when I realized, hey, there's a huge opportunity for a business here. And, and Amy, how is it for you? It, your mom is sort of known as the, the Martha Stewart of marijuana. Is there any part of you that thinks this is a little strange? No, absolutely not. My mom is an amazing role model, and I consider her the modern-day Pauline Sabin, the woman that overturned alcohol prohibition. And my mom is going to overturn marijuana prohibition, so this is historical. And it's like, I can't believe she's my mom at the same time. And, and how big a business is this for you, Cheryl? Because obviously it's been very lucrative. Well, nationally, they estimate that cannabis will be a legal $47 billion industry by 2016. And for me personally, I make $500 an hour as an expert, but also we just raised $10 million to take the concept of the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club worldwide. Tell so me, very excited. what is the, exactly is the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club? I mean, who are the members? What do you guys do? Obviously, I'm assuming you get together and enjoy marijuana. Yeah. Yes. yes, we love marijuana. Um, <laughs> um, no, what happened, and we wanted to make sure that we had a legal garden. So when I had my legal garden, I, I give parties and I give my cannabis free to my friends, just like you do your tomatoes. But they are not using it for medicinal purposes, are In they? In California, it's all medicinal. So, so these are only people patient. who actually have doctors prescribing marijuana yes. for their maladies, right? Exactly. So these aren't just people who want to come over and get stoned with you. No. We have a mom here, actually, Cheryl, who is an advocate. Georgia Edson is from Denver, Colorado, and the mother of an eight-year-old boy. And, and Georgia, you know, I know in Colorado, marijuana is legal, as we heard, for recreational mm -hmm. in addition to medicinal use. So how did you start using it? I started using medical marijuana because I'm a runner, and um, I was diagnosed with horrific bursitis. And my physician said, you're going to be taking high doses of ibuprofen and getting cortisone shots in your hip for as long as you continue to run. And stopping running wasn't an option. And, and the idea of, of potentially wearing out the joints because of cortisone shots and <clears throat> continuing to take large doses of ibuprofen wasn't really a good health option for me. And the idea of, of using a topical infused with cannabis was suggested to me. And I thought, gosh, I'd never even heard of such a thing. And it's, it's literally a lotion or a cream, and you apply it to the infected area, and the cannabis is a natural, natural anti-inflammatory. And within three months of using only the cannabis-infused topical, I was able to run a half marathon. Well, I know that you believe that marijuana, as you've, you've told us here today, has healing powers, but are you right? And what are the potential dangers of using marijuana? Dr. Sanjay Gupta is here. He'll answer those questions right after this. Up next, the controversial debate regarding marijuana. Is it a gateway drug? This is hypocrisy. It could potentially help people who really need it. The idea that it somehow tricks your brain to now try LSD, now try heroin, now try cocaine. There's just not evidence of that. That's next.